Well, today on the Scientist Say Farmer, I don't know why I'm talking like that. We're gonna be doing something that I have not seen on YouTube at all, and it's gonna be a first time for me too. But we're going to be changing the, let's try that again. We're going to be changing the wobble drive belt on my 488 Haybine. And the New Holland engineers, when they designed this, they made it as difficult as possible to change. It is going to be a pain in my seat support. So without further ado, let's get started. I am armed with printed pages from Z Manual today, so I'm not completely making this stuff up. Okay, there's a few things just kidding. There's a crap ton of things that have to happen in order to get this off. So first of all, we have to remove the uh, knife head bolt right there. Take that completely out. That's going to be a three quarter inch socket. We have to come up and remove the shield here. A couple bolts there and a couple bolts inside there. Pull this completely out of there. Then, I think for the sake of ease, I'm going to remove this shield here so I can get complete access to the chains and belts, or belt in there. And we have to remove those chains, we have to remove the belt, we have to remove a few things off the wobble drive head as well, like those three bolts right there. And there are a few bolts on the inside of uh, the gearbox, not visible here. We'll see it when we go to get them off. They have to be undone. And then we also, first and foremost, have to loosen our idler pulley for the belt. So no time better than the present. Let's get started on this mad hog. And this is off. And now this exposes uh, our drive shaft. And so this little set screw right here is what we need to undo now. So I'm not sure if you have ever heard of a universal socket before, but if you don't have these things, these are glorious. It's basically a socket that can fit on any type of a head, whether it's um, like those star-shaped heads or a regular uh, hex head um, or even a square head like this and this one is a 9 16 well don't wrench on it too tight because you actually gotta loosen that lock nut up there first now let's try giving this one a shot there we go yeah I like that much better and I tell you what, those universal sockets are the cat's meow. Go buy it now if you don't have it. So I'm gonna see if I can pull that off there now. I don't imagine it's going to come off too easily. That wasn't too bad. I just kind of stuck two pry bars in there like this one on each side and it's just prying off real nice. Before we take that off all the way, <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead and get the belt off on this lower pulley down here the driven pulley just so we don't have to contend with that shaft uh, getting in our way so if you're doing this at home you probably already have a pretty good understanding of how your hay bind works but you've got your wobble box right here and this is what drives your knife your wobble box moves back and forth like that and uh, it causes your knife head to go back and forth just like that which moves your knives or your sickle sections back and forth through their guards the wobble box is driven by this belt, which is driven by um, a pulley on the gearbox up there. We can't see it right now. We'll see it better later. Um, the entire reason I am changing this belt is because there's this little crack here. And maybe that crack's not a big deal. I don't know. It's not cracked here. And it's got a bit of space there. But I tell you what. But this big of a pain this is to change this, 
I don't want to be mowing and have a field half done and that belt breaks. So I bought a brand new Case New Holland belt. I stick with the brand name stuff, uh, the OEM stuff for the critical parts. It's just not worth it. And that belt is not very expensive. I'm, I think it was 30 or 40 bucks. So let's get started. I'm gonna drop that, or loosen that I should say, take out my knife head bolt, and uh, then like I showed you earlier, I'm gonna take out those three bolts on the bottom. I'm just down below getting the knife head bolt out. You'll have to uh, adjust the knife head. You may have to push it in or out because you need to get your bolt lined up so it goes through, or you need to get your bolt lined up with this hole here so I can get your wrench through it. But once I get that out, I'm gonna take a three quarter inch socket, get these guys out too. Three quarter inch socket also loosened my idler pulley right there. Looks like there's a big washer right uh, on top of the lock washer and then your bolt head. So with those bolts out, the next thing we have to do is remove this little spacer right along here at the bottom. Not this big guy right here, that little spacer right underneath there. And then once I get that out, I'm going to flip this thing around 180 degrees. I have no idea how easy it's gonna to be to get that spacer out. It doesn't look like it's gonna be very fun. I'll put it that way. This actually doesn't look like it's gonna to be too bad. I'm just taking a, just tapping on it very ever so gently. Just to get it out of there. Okay, so the book said next to flip this around 180 degrees like that. Okay, so drive that all the way off. And the drive belt is going to have to come out beneath this, but I think I'm going to have to get it off up there first before I can get it off here. So, let's come around and I'm gonna finish getting this guy off now and then I'm gonna take those shields off, that shield off. They have this lubricated up, which I'm very thankful for. Next, I am loosening the tension adjusters by eight, just because it seems like a good number. I'm removing the chains now. So, loosening the idler sprocket for one of these chains. Get that all loosened. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get that chain out of there, uh, off that without uh, taking off a connecting link or not. I hope I don't have to, but I guess we'll find out. Also, one other thing I wanna show before we get too into the weeds on this, I made two black marks on the sprocket for the upper roller and the lower roller, just to help make sure they're in time when I take these chains off in case they move. So as long as these two black marks line up, then my chevrons will be meshing with the top and the 
the bottom roller. All right, well, let's keep ticking on. I got real lucky here because the master link is right there for this looks like it's the top roller. By the way, for perspective, this is where that's at on the hay bind. And I'm gonna have to loosen the under roller, which to do that, I loosen this nut right here and then let out on this, loosen that. And what it does is it actually lets this arm slip down, which goes to that really dark roller or sprocket right there that you can't really see. So I'm going to disconnect that master link there and get that chain off. All right, now I'm just going to rotate my roll until I can find that master link. There's my master link. So I'm just going to undo that one and then that will get me the chain all the way off. Pry the top piece off. There's a trick you can do this. You're supposed to be able to grab, pinch this side with the uh, pliers while the one end of the plier hooks around this and then you squeeze on that and it's supposed to snap it off. But I can't do that with two hands and I can't get into it right here either. So I'm just kind of prying it off like that. And as you can see, I just put it back on. So I got to stop pulling the camera. Okay, got it pried off. So now I'm just going to pop that down, take it right off, take this guy off. How's my hand look? I know it's not a great shot. Just slide that guy off and then push the master link out. I removed the chains off these sprockets. So now the two sprockets on the gearbox are completely free. There's no chains to bind them up. Now, before I go under there to remove those bolts, I'm going to raise the swath gate all the way up. Let's see if I can do it with it. Yep, I'll just raise it up there, put my pin back in. How's it going? There is a lock washer and then a regular washer behind that. It feels like that might be a carriage bolt or something. Well, for the last step, here's where it starts to get fun because now we have to remove the gearbox bolts to hold it to the plate. For perspective, we're looking right here on the machine and you can see one bolt right there that needs to come out. And then there's a total of four bolts uh, all located behind this pulley. What I think happens is once we remove those, this gearbox will be able to slide out a little bit this way. The entire thing is gonna slide out this way. And then there should be just enough space to get the pulley off and around that. I guess we'll find out. We got our first casualty of the day. It feels as amazing as it looks. So here's the deal. It's gonna be really freaking hard to get those other two bolts out of that thing and I'm looking at this and I'm thinking that's a lot more bolts but I could take all these out and then all of these out down here along the back and then this entire plate this entire thing should just slide out it'll be a little more weight but I think it's going to be a lot easier to reassemble than having to hold this thing up and get those bolts back in. So that's what I'm gonna do because I'm not sure I wanna try to fight getting the bolts out of the back of this thing. They're stuck there behind that pulley as I showed you and it's just, it's a terrible design but I get why they did it. I hope this works. This could be the world's worst idea. 
what I'm doing here is I'm pulling this belt out first. I got that off there. Now I'm going to slide the new belt on. And I can put the new belt around here and get it in and then I can slide the belt on over there. That's gonna be my strategy. This has just been a complete cluster. Not fun. Okay. Make sure my new belt is ready to go on just like this. Why don't I go put it on my shoulder so I'm ready. guy I'm gonna get him positioned so he can go in come on get in there get in there oh man okay get the nut in that is it. So that belt's on there now. Excellent. Yeah, it's still looking mad. Now let's go down to the next part. And I am going to save this belt just because I want to back up, but you know, there's a crack right there. I don't know that that would have been good to be rolling around with and a couple more cracks right there. So this belt uh, is probably at the end of its life, I'd say. Now let's try to get this guy on. So what I had done that worked well to get it off was I pulled this all the way out. get it all the way under there I got this on the wrong side of there so there we go all right we got it installation is reverse opposite of removal so first I'm gonna go and reinstall all of these except for the ones that hold the shield. And then remember, I also have to put those two bolts I took out of this. Looking forward to that. Back under the machine, we're on the home stretch now. I'm just going to uh, tighten up those four nuts on the outside and then replace those three bolts I took out around that bearing there. I got those bolts on the backside tightened down. Now is going to come the fun task of rerouting this chain. That's gonna be a real peach too. Well, we're slowly and surely getting her done. I got both of the chains on. That was not a fun process. Anyway, so now all I'm doing is I'm in the process of uh, push this down tight to get tension on that chain and then tighten that up and then I'm going to come around here 
to the tensioner for the other uh, uh, roller. And I'm going to tighten this nut down until I got a lot of tension on that roller. There is actually a jam nut or a little lock nut underneath there too. Uh, so that might have to get let out a little bit if I need to go tighter. Anyway, once I got my other chain, I think it's for the bottom roller uh, that adjusts this tight enough, I just tighten this down real good and then we'll move on to the next step. Next, we're gonna go ahead and tighten these back up. Next, we have to reassemble the wobble box which is a task I have not been looking forward to doing again, given how difficult that was to all get apart. Now we're gonna take that spacer we took out. Slide that in right underneath. It's already telling me it doesn't wanna play. It's going to be a good time. Oh yeah, I like the look of that. Now we're going to get the knife head bolt. Well, the knife head. So I just slid that out of the way. And the bolt inserts from the bottom up. So you can tap it out from the top if you had to. This is a three quarter inch. Got our knife head bolted down. Now, last thing we gotta do, is just get this tensioned. And what it says is we want it to move three or a quarter inch to three eighths inch with a 15 pound force at mid span, AKA I'm gonna go until it feels pretty tight. So I put a little bit of oil on these splines just to keep them uh, from seizing up on this at some point. We're just gonna reattach this. I'm putting this on it's important to note that there's actually a hole right there where the set screw goes, so I'll need to take that back off, get that lined up. Now with that back on, I just need to put the shield on and I've got this thing done. It is a bit of a beast to get on there, so I put wood blocks here and I tapped on it with wood blocks tapping here and then tapping on the opposite side and then kind of going around and across. Well, it is all assembled. I got the belt back on there nice and tight. I got my knife head torqued down to 85 foot pounds. Got the wobble box tightened down. Uh, I remembered to put those two bolts back in the gearbox I took out. That wasn't too fun. Got this guard back on, which believe it or not, these two bolts right in here absolutely fought me. This is probably the second worst thing to get on. And um, I checked all the bolts inside. We put the rollers back where they were for tension. We put the uh, swath gates back where they were. I think that belt will probably have to, probably needs to go a little tighter. Um, I think we're all set to do a fire up. Well, so far so good. It, it sounds normal. I don't hear anything wrong with it. Um, so I think I'm gonna go put it, put it back in the shed until first cut. Hopefully this was useful. If you like more content like this,
subscribe and you'll get notification subscribe and hit notifications for when I do post more videos and um, like it if you liked it if you didn't like it tell me why you didn't like it too I'll try to do better next time thanks for watching and have a good hay season